So, literally as I um, read this to you this morning, this is literally hot off the press. Um, so it turns out last night, BuzzFeed, I don't know, people reading me, I mean, you know I'm immediately triggering a lot of people, but BuzzFeed got a hold of the leaked uh, Brexit analysis, and it basically boils down to this. It says that the UK will be worse off in every scenario. So, BuzzFeed News has seen a new Brexit impact assessment which says leaving the EU will adversely hit almost every single sector and every UK region. This is what I have been saying now since the referendum. I have been, and I am, I am being vindicated here on what I've, what I've been saying for, the, for almost the, for the past year and a half at this point. So, and here's the thing, for people saying, oh, this is fake news, the government has confirmed that this is real. The government have said, yes, this is real uh, at this point. And there's going to be more stuff, I guarantee, roll out for the day. There's already been one uh, senior Tory saying that, uh, that that paper must now be released in full. So here we go. Um, the government's new analysis of the impact of Brexit says that the UK would be worse off outside the European Union under every scenario modelled. BuzzFeed News can reveal. The assessment, which is titled... The EU exit analysis, cross Whitehall briefing, and dated January of 2018, looked at three of the most plausible Brexit scenarios based on existing EU arrangements. So, under a comprehensive free trade agreement with the EU and the UK, the UK growth would be lower than 5% for over the next 15 years compared to current forecasts according to the analysis. The no-deal scenario, which would see the UK revert to World Trade Organization rules, would reduce growth by 8% over that exact same period. The softest Brexit option, the continued single market access through membership uh, of the European Economic Area, in the long term, would still lower growth from that same period by about 2%. These calculations do not take into account any short-term hits to the economy of Brexit, such as the cost of adjusting the economy to the new customs, customs arrangements. The assessment seen by BuzzFeed is keeping, uh, keeping tightly guarded, uh, is kept tightly guarded inside the government, and was um, preferred, <coughs> and was prepared by officials across Whitehall's for the Department of Exiting the European Union, which is reportedly being uh, present, uh, presented uh, to key ministers in one-to-one -one meetings this week ahead of the discussion that the Brexit Cabinet uh, Subcommittee will meet with next week. So basically they're showing them this report on a one-to-one -one basis, on a secret basis, going, yeah, this is what's going to happen. Um, asked why the Prime Minister was not making the analysis public, the Department for Leaving the EU uh, source <laughs> told BuzzFeed News because it's embarrassing. <laughs> <coughs> oh, this is, this is hilarious. Because I've been saying this for ages now. And there are going to be people who, in the comments, I guarantee you, are still going to be saying this is a good idea. So, even though the analysis assumes that all the UK will agree a trade deal with the... Uh, with a trade deal with the US, while over dozens of the EU's current trade agreements and consider loosening regulations after, after Brexit, there is no scenario that does not leave the country worse off. Official believes that the methodology for the new assessment is better than the one used uh, for similar analysis before the referendum. In January, the January 2018 analysis looked only at exiting the, the existing EU arrangements, which means bespoke agreements have not yet been modelled. Prime Minister Theresa May has reportedly said she is seeking a deep and special partnership with the EU. The other main findings that are on this paper is almost 
every sector of the economy, including, including the analysis, would be negatively impacted in all three scenarios, with chemicals, clothing, manufacturing, food and drink, cars and retail hit the hardest. The analysis only found that the uh, found that only the agricultural sector under the WTO scenario would not be adversely affected. Every UK region would also be negatively uh, would also be affected neg negatively in all the model scenarios in the North East, West Midlands, Northern Ireland. Um, before even considering the possibility of a hard border, are facing the biggest falls in economic performance. The other one is there is a risk. To that London's uh, status as the financial centre would be severely eroded, with all the possibilities available after a free trade agreement not much different to those in the WTO option. So, another one. On the plus side, the analysis assumes that in all scenarios that the trade deal with the US will be concluded and that it would benefit the, GDD, the GDP by only about 0.2% in the long term. So this amazing trade deal that people have said, this is going to be um, like amazing, you know, we'll be able to trade with America, it'll be great. Um, it will affect the economy by 0.2%. What an amazing trade deal. Uh, trade deals with other non-EU countries and blocs such as China, India and Australia and the Gulf countries and the surrounding Southeast Asia, uh, Southeast Asia would add in a further 0.1 to 0.4 <laughs> to the total GDP over the long term. That's fantastic. Oh, so anyway, the article continues. The government has found itself in repeated difficulty over the existence or lack of uh, Brexit impact studies. Last year, the, the Brexit Secretary David Davis, Davis suggested that dozens had been carried out in excruciating detail. But after a Commons vote forced the publication of these assessments, he told MPs that they, he had been misunderstood and that they did not exist after all. The department published a series of broad sectoral analysis um, papers instead, and we've covered those. The broad sectoral analysis covered such amazing things, such as electricity, it's important to the UK economy, and believe it or not, this fascinating nugget of, of wisdom that fishing fleets, get this, fishing fleets can be found near the coast. What a, what a fantastic paper. So the biggest negative impact comes from the UK's decision to leave both the EU Customs Union and the single market, the issue at the heart of the Conservative Party ongoing internal strife over Brexit. Um, leaving, these uh, leaving these agreements creates what the analysis calls non-trade barriers to trade, such as loss of market access in certain sectors and new customers and border checks and practices. Um, some of these uh, can be minis 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 bleh, minimised if Britain to were to remain in the single market via the EEA. And that would leave us <coughs> with 2% less growth over 15 years. Um, where are we? Uh, yeah, uh, can we, uh, and the impact can be partly offset through domestic policy or trade deals uh, with the US and others, but the losses cannot be estimated altogether once the UK is outside the customs union. These new analyses suggest that there could be an opportunity for the UK in agreeing trade deals with non-EU countries and deregulating in areas such as the environment, product standards and employment law. So, this is what I have been, again, warning about. If we do these trade deals with the US, we will have to lower our environmental standards. Considering we have one of the best in the world, we are going to have to lower our product standards, meaning that you will get less, you know, good products to the consumer. 
uh, how can how can you actually square that now as as a Brexiteer saying you are going to get worse products after Brexit with worse you know standards um, and the like? It is just insane. And employment law, this is another one. Are you prepared for this government? Bear in mind, it's one of the most hard right. Um, government in history, in modern history, are you prepared for them to meddle with your employment law? So, however, these analyses has also cast doubt on the idea uh, that these benefits would be enough to mitigate the loss to the economy caused by leaving the single market and customs union. Moving away from the existing set of rules and standards would also make it harder to trade with the EU in future and would be politically uh, controversial dem dem um, domestically. And they're right, because if we lower our standards, we can't trade with the EU. And because our standards are a certain length, bear in mind they're higher than those in the US. That means... Our manufacturers and the like cannot then compete in the US or these other countries because we have such a high product standards. Now, that is a good thing, having those high standards. Bear, in my, bear that in mind. Um, the specific um, debate risks deepening uh, the trade conflict uh, this was deepening the conflict inside the Tory party between those such as Chancellor Philip Hammond who want to remain more closely aligned with the EU and the hardline Brexiteers led by backbencher Jacob Rees-Mogg. The government spokesperson told BuzzFeed, We have already set out that the government is undertaking a wide range of ongoing analysis in support of our EU exit negotiations and preparations. We have been clear that we are not prepared uh, to provide a running commentary on any aspect of this ongoing internal work that the ministers have a duty not to publish anything that could risk exposing our ex risk exposing our negotiating position and this is complete bollocks <laughs> because <coughs> if if they're referring to these papers as embarrassing should the government and the ministers and the public at large not know what is the potential damage and outcome of these negotiations. It should absolutely know. And people claiming uh, parliamentary sovereignty, well, them doing this undermines parliamentary sovereignty. By keeping this information closed and not open to the public, and not open to Parliament. They are undermining your parliamentary sovereignty. One of the key arguments many people cited for leaving the EU. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yep. Uh, as the government source said, as part of its preparations for leaving the European Union, officials uh, from across Whitehall are undertaking a wide range of ongoing analysis. An early draft of these next stage analysis has looked at a different off-the-shelf arrangement that currently exists as well as other external estimates. It does not, however, set out, the, uh, set out or measure the details of our, out, of our desired outcome, a new deep and special partnership with the EU. What does this mean? This is what I've, um, this is what something Ian Dunt has said, that rather than actually be clear about what the government wants, you are having to, every time um, Theresa May or someone makes a, a, you know, from the government makes a speech about it, we are having to try and decode what they mean by this. It's unbelievable. Um, oh yeah, or predict the conclusions of the negotiations. It also contains a significant number of caveats and is hugely dependent on a wide range of assumptions um, which demonstrate that significantly, significantly more work needs to be carried out or uh, out to make use of these analysis and draw out conclusions. Um, I think that's pretty clear. Um, 
what the paper's already saying. I mean, so if we get, um, where are we? Uh, yeah, here we are. So if we do get a comprehensive tree free trade agreement, the UK growth will be 5% lower over the next 15 years. So a no deal scenario, which is what a lot of people want, which means us going to the trade WTO rules, would reduce growth by 8% over that period. But us staying in the economic area and into the customs union would still lower growth by 2%. So tell me which option do you want? Do you want the 8% 8, 8 left growth, growth over 15 years, 5% growth over um, 15 years, or 2%? I know which one I want. The one that gives us growth, which is staying in the EU. And this has made even more the case for staying in the EU, by the way. So... <laughs> So there you go. Uh, there's there's not much more you can say to it than that. And I, it's 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 so funny um, to see people say, "Oh, we'll be better off outside." Well, here's you know the EU exit analysis for the cross white hole bri briefing uh, will be worse off. You know. It's everything, everything that I've been saying and everything that, you know, um, you know, we've been saying even before the referendum is true. If we leave the EU, we will be worse off than we are, than we are uh, at the moment. So enjoy. Um, but I'd say if we do get a transitional arrangement, agreement, although we don't know, enjoy the last sort of couple of years of actual normality in the UK because you're going to look back on these years and think yeah those are some good years we had <laughs>